The former Georgia kindergarten teacher has been acquitted on child molestation charges. Count number one, not guilty. Count number two. And so it went. Friends and family of Tanya Kraft cheered loudly outside the courthouse, just outside Chattanooga, Ringgold, Georgia, yesterday as the not guilty verdicts were read. She was arrested two years ago, after which she lost her job, her home, and custody of her two kids. Kraft said she now plans to work to help other people in her situation. It's not about my story. It's about... It's about the kids' stories and what they go through in this. And, um, and other people that are accused, falsely accused, and I'll do anything I can to help protect them and to help protect the children of the falsely accused. Her attorneys have filed a motion to regain custody of her son and daughter. They've contacted the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office about what they say is the fraudulent behavior of the judge and the D.A. in this case. Let's get more insight from Beth Karras within session on our sister network, True TV, who is in New York. Hey, Beth, uh, when would she possibly get her kids back? Well, it's going to have to wind its way through the courts. Obviously, the sooner the better, but they've been with their biological father for the past few years, and she divorced him, and it was a contentious divorce. One of the problems she had with the whole administration of justice in this case is, is that the judge who presided over this case that just ended with 22 not guilty verdicts was the attorney who represented her husband during that acrimonious divorce, but he refused to step down. So there are a lot of issues here, and that's one of the reasons the case is, uh, uh, the defense at least wants to uh, have it in, looked into. But this case, Chuck, as you can imagine, really polarized the community. These are contentious uh, allegations here. Three little girls, and we're talking little. This was a kindergarten teacher. These girls were friends with, with her daughter. They had all attended a birthday party. We're talking five, six, seven years old, obviously two years old at the time they all testified at the trial. Her own daughter testified against her at the trial. Uh, and her attorney did speak uh, to the press after the verdicts. He is angry. His name is Dr. Demosthenes Landros, and he spoke about what you just said, that he ha he's disgusted with the whole judicial process in this case, and he's already reported it to the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office. Sloppy interviews, corrupt judicial process, ridiculous last-minute, falsified, fraudulent evidence, Terrible interviews of children, ridiculous rulings on evidence. She endured it all. She will continue to endure it all. Wow. This attorney who hails from Ann Arbor, Michigan, has the title doctor because he is also a psychologist and he is considered an expert in false allegations of physical abuse and sexual abuse. And so that's his passion, ferreting out these allegations that are false. He obviously, in his opinion, did it in this case, uh, and the verdict shows it. There are people who still believe, though, that she is responsible for this. It's hard to believe what it would be like to have your own daughter testify mm -hmm. against you, you know, in a courtroom like that. I guess there were three accusers initially, all told. Yes, three, 22 charges altogether. There are various types of uh, sexual molestation, touching, and, and uh, some digital penetration is uh, how it is defined in the law. Has the jury spoken? Any juror spoken out about their decision? Not aware yet of okay. jurors speaking out. Sometimes it takes a little while to massage them. They need to kind of sit on their verdict for a while, and then we'll speak out. Yeah, let it uh, sit for a while. Thanks, Beth. Appreciate it.